So this place where I'm staying at, Mike's place, the kitchen, and the living room, big screen TV, and this is upstairs in the room where I'm staying at. Green Bay Packers, and the bed, and my food for the week, and the sunrise outside. So it might look like a nice suburban neighborhood in America with the nice green grass and the houses. But as soon as you turn on the radio, which I brought with me on my trip, and you select all the stations on FM, you'll soon realize you're in isolation. So here we go. Same with that AM. Of course, maybe AM has more stations, which I'll try to find out. But AM only has scratches and nothing really important that you can distinguish. So here's the Ann Stevens Elementary ADAC Regional District in ADAC, Alaska. It's a abandoned elementary school. Has an interesting design because of the grass structure that goes up to the almost the edge of the top of the building. Probably done for snow drifts in the winter time. Hey, how's it going, Ray? Good. So what do you do here? Nothing. Nothing? You're just the... Uh, I just stir the pots. The, the sturdy pots for the uh, coffee and then you do mechanic work here? Yeah, I mean I operate. Okay, nice. How many mechanics are there? Just me. Just you? Main guy. Coffee breaks over, huh? Yeah. Alright. So, man, the weather changes here every day, huh? Every day. Every hour. Dude. Every hour. Well, even 15 minutes. It was sunny 15 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, it changed pretty fast. Yeah. So what's your name? Chris. You're Chris. Right. I'm Jay. Where are we headed? Uh, we're headed to, we're going to go through Bering Hill up here, and then we're going to go to White Alice. So White yeah, Alice. Uh, cell site. What's that White Alice? It used to be some kind of communications port, from what I'm told. And you just be, put a cell site up there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's for the... For our service out here, it's got a 40 mile radius. Oh, okay. So I hear this is the old high school. Yeah, this is. Uh, but when was that closed? In the 90s? Uh, you know what? I'm not exactly sure we can go in there if you want. Oh, maybe later. It goes underground too. Oh, really? Yeah. See those windows, see? Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty good the ground. How big is the swimming pool that's underneath ground here? It's an Olympic sized pool. Olympic sized pool, man. Right, yeah. That'd be nice to see, but we need flashlights, right? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. This is a power plant right here. There's five of them. This is the only one that's left operational. Is this where Tina works? Yep. Oh, okay. It was power plant two or three. But yeah, this is how the city gets its power. All diesel, right? Oh, yeah, giant, giant engines. They're Man. huge. Purple landmark, and people say there's something to be done about it, but... But no one really bothers it. Well, I mean, everything's so rotted out now, it'd just be... Too much work to actually fix it up, huh? Yeah, you gotta be careful around this. was probably really nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, somebody put a lot of work into this. What kind of church was it? Just a general? I don't know. A better job, then I got a better job, then I got a better job. Huh. This job is not. Yeah, he's in the Philippines right now, though. Oh yeah. yeah. So good news Bible, today's English version, and then we got the songbook, which is um, a special type of songbook. Book of Worship for United States Forces. Military Personnel Songbook, 1974, a bunch of songs. So you're married to a Filipino then? Uh, we're not married. Oh, but you're involved with the Filipino. Right, right, yeah. Oh, okay. My passed away, so they went to the Philippines for a month. Oh, both of them are go gone right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. They'll be back here next week or so. So you call this a bunker, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's It's pretty interesting. Yeah. So here's the other side of the island. A lot of birds here. They're, they have huge wingspans. salmon are easy to catch now. Oh, yeah. 
So this is White Alice, huh? White Alice. Okay. Our servers, these are our radios over here on the wall for our cell service on the island. So this allows you to call anywhere in the world, basically? Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can just call up the last year. This is uh, not our equipment, this is the marine exchange equipment for, I guess, boat monitoring and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, but that's it. Huh. How many batteries you got? You got four, sixteen, huh? Yeah, what's the name of this island, though? Adak Island? Adak Island. Hey, so all these lakes, though, um, how do you think they were formed? You think they were formed by those sinkholes? Mm, I don't know, I just know. With the snow, the amount of snow that we get and the runoff and stuff, I mean, if you look around, there's just, there's, there's winding rivers everywhere. You see the little crevices and stuff like that. It's just, you know, yeah. how they were formed is a good question. What's the most dangerous thing you got to worry about here? Uh, Those uh, sinkholes, right? Th that's a factory, you know. I haven't heard too many about too many injuries or anything like that. Huh. Having to do with those, but um, weather is a big thing. Weather, um, you know, not not right now, but shortly here in a later. Months, it'll, it'll get pretty bad. Uh, weather, ordinance. Ordinance. Yeah. What's ordinance again? Um, leftover bombs and munitions <laughs> from when the military was here. I don't know uh. how they ended up in the roadside. And the roads. Oh yeah. You know, they, you know, there was a lot of preparation and stuff back then. They thought there would. Uh, I guess they thought there was a. Well, there was an immediate threat with the Japanese and whatnot. But yeah. You know, there's there is a good amount of ordnance around here, and there's still a lot left to be cleaned up. And What's that story about the Navy guy two years ago? That was I don't. That's race. That's race story. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I never even heard of that. Huh, that's, but, uh, that's the guy. The guy that was coming out to try to do some gold mining and with his canoeing operation and all that. Yeah. yeah. That that happened. You know, they they looked for him for over a week. He came huh. in. He had a campsite set up, and I don't know. He, somebody went looking for him. Somebody went to check on him because he told people where he was going to be at. Yeah. Which was pretty smart, but uh, they never found him. So they found this tent site. Yeah. Yeah. So evidently he f fell into one of those sinkholes and then. Maybe. Twenty-two feet deep. It's just this overgrowth grows over everything. I mean, hmm. even like these small little ponds and stuff, like you see down here, it'll grow over it. Oh, and yeah. You'll walk up to it and it'll, it'll feel like a waterbed. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, there's, you know, it's just, it's, and the, the biggest part about being out here is, you know, the safety aspect of it. If you do get hurt, yeah. You know, there's, there's physician assistants, there's PAs out here, and there's a clinic and whatnot, but if you get really hurt, they have to get a medevac out here. We know which by the time you get a call and everything it'll take probably three four five hours just you know it's three hours one way Man. and then, you know depending on your injury so you're kind of screwed if you get really uh, injured that's, the, that's a downfall so you shouldn't really go adventure <laughs> well it's always you should go with somebody and let yeah. somebody else know where you're going um, yeah like mike says he always takes a sat phone when he goes to another island Oh yeah, yeah, when he goes out on the boat, yeah, it's just a good idea. I mean, because like you've seen, the weather could just come in, the wind could start up, and you'll be out there, and we have all the equipment on the boat, GPS and whatnot, but... Huh. Yeah. Okay. There are some danger to this place. So you say that you can get medevac insurance here? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually like kind of a necessity. You never know. So 100 bucks a month and that covers you? No, a year. A year. It's like 125 a year. 125 a year. That's a really good deal. Yeah. And then if you didn't have it though, and you got hurt, it cost how much to get to Anchorage? A little over 33,000. 33,000 just for a flight. Yeah, it's a medevac though. Medevac. You know, there's two flights here a week. You know, Sundays and Thursdays, but sometimes they're canceled due to weather. But if you are seriously injured enough, I mean, Man. you know, you have to go back to the mainland. You have to get to Anchorage. Huh. So yeah. That'd be a pricey injury. Yeah. Plus, you know, there's just time, you know, if you fell out here somewhere and broke your back or your legs, you know, then it's a pretty rough ride back to town, then you'd have to <laughs> be posted up somewhere and wait for that three or four hour, you know, three or four hour wait for the medevac to get here and then same thing back. All right, so I came down here to the city hall uh, here in ADAC and um, what's your name? Layton. Layton, and what's your position here? I'm the city manager. City manager, okay. Who's the mayor in town? Uh, Tom Spittler. Tom Spittler, okay. And I, just had a, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, I wanted to ask about your water quality here in ADAC. Uh, could you explain uh, where does it come from, the source, and how do you treat it? Uh, we treat it primarily by uh, chlorine gas, and it comes from Lake Bonnie Rose and, and Dee Marie. So we have two sources. Okay, how many dams do you have 
here? Uh, we have approximately five, but two of which we're using. Two of them, okay. So the other three are just... Um, just they're, they're for other lakes that we don't use right now. Oh, okay. All right, and do you add any chlorine to the water here? Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, we use uh, chlorine gas. Chlorine gas. And how about fluoride? No, we don't treat it with fluoride. And what's the primary reason for that? Uh, the system's not capable of it, and we've just never had a need or uh, any interest for doing so. So it's... we've just never done that. Oh, yeah, so it's also, it's also a financial burden on you guys, right? Uh, I would assume so, since we don't, we don't yeah. get involved with that. Um, there's, there's no point. I mean, but I would expect that it would cost a tremendous amount anyway. It's a hazardous, right. you know, chemical. Mm -hmm. so, oh, okay. And then I hear within the next uh, few years, you're thinking about uh, creating some hydro dams here to create hydropower. Well, we don't have to construct the dams. Oh, okay. So that's, that's the whole key reason behind using hydropower. But, right. Uh, we're studying the feasibility of uh, putting the town on hydroelectric power, and that's kind of where we're at right now. And the the major uh, obstacle right now is what. Uh, well, we don't know. We don't, we don't know how much to, how much will be generated, and that, uh -huh. that um, when we go looking for financing, that's that's going to be a key thing. Is uh, mm -hmm. and how much can you produce with spending how much money, and that's okay. going to play a big factor, um, as as well as what permits are going to be required um, right. from the federal government and whatnot. So, oh, okay. Uh, but you know, on the grand scheme of things, having the dams already built mm -hmm. uh, takes us halfway through the battle at least. Halfway. Okay, that's good, and that's. Those dams are from what year? Forties. The forties. That's basically when the uh, naval base was strong here, right? Mm -hmm. In the forties. They, they built all of that. Oh, okay, great. And uh, one thing about um, I wanted to ask you: what kind of jobs are available? What's the um, the job that you've seen going around right now? Uh, you know, they're all part time. Uh, yeah. Most of them are with the fish plant. Oh, okay. Um, because they're the ones that are the major economic driver around here everything else is support related so, right okay. um, you know that's that's pretty much how it goes i mean support services for fishing as well mm -hmm. as fishing itself okay and you mentioned there's a tsa position a permanent position available mm -hmm. okay there is. yeah all right maybe i'll check into that so is there a requirement that you need two tsa permanent here for to be based in adac or is that a tsa rule or no, what that's 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 what they would like to have they prefer that yeah i mean okay. it, it stays on the federal budget obviously to have some yeah. have people that are here okay. um, but as long as the jet flies that's you know, mm -hmm. tsa is required like for example if you had a full flight coming inbound you'd have to alaskan airlines would have to have those seats available for tsa which actually cuts into their budget or revenue right or no that's I mean, not really a concern it, it, that's not even a concern oh, okay. no, because our, the planes are very rarely 100 percent full but, yeah, uh, like yesterday, 27 people. So. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, th there are a couple times during the year where it's completely full, but, I mean, there, there's plenty of non-rev yes. passengers on that plane that yeah. can get bumped off. I mean, so, okay. not, not a concern. All right, well, thanks very much for your information. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, I'm and here. You didn't tell me your name first. I'm Jay. Okay. And your name? Kat. Nice to meet you, Kat. <laughs> so I'm here at the general store here in ADAC, and uh, I was talking with Kat, and what would you, you told me a very interesting information. What does the uh, Chinese want to do? The Chinese want to buy water. Oh, really? Because their, their water is so polluted over there, they have millions and millions of people, oh. and all their rivers are polluted, and they have a really, really hard time finding water over there anymore. So they want to come to ADAC, and then how, how much water do they want to buy? They want to buy five million. Five million. Five million at a time. At and a time. A tanker. I don't know if it's the bubble, but we t we're going to get new lines laid. The contractors are already trying to get lined up. The Alley Corporation is trying to deal with that. So. Oh, okay, so they're going to buy five million gallons at a time, twice a month. So that's about ten million gallons. Mm -hmm. And so now ADAC just needs to improve their water right. capabilities. Right. Yeah, our oh, water okay. lines and everything has to be improved huh. or replaced because. It's all, a lot of our water it's pipe. It's old. Well, some of it's still the wooden water pipe. Oh, really, man? Yeah, <laughs> the wooden. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen wooden water pipe? No. <laughs> they have some in Anchorage, too, still. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check are it out. Are you on foot? Or you I, I got my little bike. Oh, is that your little bike? Yeah, did you see it? I've seen it, yeah. Yeah. So in the houses here, they have solariums, which is this glass part area that sun's allowed to enter. Then at the windows, they have this blockage to prevent uh, wind or snow from blocking the window that opens. Back on June 21st, I saw 
uh, an abandoned closed McDonald's, which was actually an illegal McDonald's in Iraq. And then July, August, September, three months later, I'm here in ADAC in the Aleutian chain, and I see a McDonald's which was a legal one, but it's also closed and abandoned. So I'm gonna go check it out. I just can't believe there's a McDonald's that used to be here in ADAC. So the views here are quite amazing. Different types of weather pass through here at all times of the day. I'm glad the weather's nice now, just a bit windy. So I'm gonna go to Clam Bay, this direction now. So in the beginning, there was this, a planet full of water and mountains and weather and inhabitable land. So right behind me is the National Forest of Adak. There's only a couple trees that are huddled together over there because really on this island, there are no trees. And surprisingly, right next to the National Forest is the Pet Cemetery. There's actually no cemetery here in Adak except for this one for pets, which is really interesting because I've never seen a place without a cemetery before. And as the sign depicts, it was first initiated as the US Navy K-9 Corps. So I guess all their dogs that were good at work were buried here and remembered. So I've never visited a pet cemetery before so it was kind of unusual and I wondered what would a sign say for them. This is Pooch. From 71 to 85, the best dog in the world. So supposedly there are sinkholes on the island which have gone down to as deep as 22 feet and if you get one of those you're pretty much screwed. So I found this little hole which I don't know if it's a sinkhole but I'm not going to try it because that's probably one of the only dangers that you really encounter on this island except for the ordinances which are the unexploded bombs that might be around here. They just were forgotten and at Moffat Hill, Mount Moffat they used to use that as a target area, so there's unexploded ones out there too. No, uh... Hey, did you come to watch the game? Red Sox? No, I came over to visit, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, my wife don't uh, like to watch. Sports <laughs> picks me up. I want to watch sports. Oh, yeah? <laughs> All right. So, hey, thanks for picking me up. No problem. Hey, what was your name? Jonathan. John. All right. Uh, hey, so how do you start this truck? Okay, so we'll yeah. get a demo. All Turn right. it on? Yeah. Toggle switch. Toggle switch. Because <laughs> the whole uh, ignition doesn't work, right? You can pull it out? Yeah. It's an old Navy truck. Oh, okay. So, probably from the 80s? Yeah. Wow, this is really cool. No, this so, is the early 90s. Early 90s? It's a pretty old truck. Yeah. But you still maintain it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's try this out. Well, I did a little uh, run out to uh, the pet cemetery again, and on the way back I met John, who is Kat's son. And he works at a deli. So I made for dinner some wild rice, which I've been cooking for the last hour on low. So it's going to be good with avocado.